In this presentation we are going to look at waves on water. In particular we are going to look at how the energy of the waves moves at a different speed to the wave crests. This gives rise to various effects such as the wake of a ship. Towards the bottom of the photograph you can see the wake of a ship concentrated in two bands moving away from the line that the ship had travelled on. If you look carefully you will see that as you move down the wave crest moves outward through the group of waves, indicating that they are travelling faster than the group of waves as a whole. The wave crests are moving faster than the energy. We will show why this is the case. We will look at linear waves, waves with small amplitude and slope. This means that we will be able to superimpose these waves without modification. We will look at waves on water where the surface elevation is given by eta, which is equal to epsilon times the cosine of kx minus omega t. K is called the wave number, and omega the frequency of the waves. These waves will move to the right with a speed given by omega divided by k. We call this speed the phase velocity. We will use the notation c with a subscript p for this phase velocity. Waves are often described by the wavelength, the distance between wave crests. This is equal to 2 pi over k. Long waves have a small wave number, and short waves have a large wave number. Here you see a representation of the waves travelling to the right. We have greatly exaggerated the height compared to the wavelength for clarity. You should imagine them to be rescaled to conform to our requirement that the amplitudes and slopes of the waves are both small. In general, for all kinds of waves, the phase velocity varies with the frequency and the wave number. However, the frequency and wave number for a set of waves are linked. They are linked by an equation called the dispersion relation. For an infinitely deep body of water, this dispersion relation is given by omega squared is equal to k times g, where g is acceleration due to gravity. Other waves have different dispersion relations. For example, both sound waves and light waves in a vacuum have the dispersion relation omega is equal to c times k, where c is the speed of sound or the speed of light respectively. If we consider another set of waves with the same amplitude but a longer wavelength, we see that they move to the right slightly faster than the original set of waves. Because the waves are linear, we can find out what will be observed if they were both present at the same time by just adding them together. The resulting waves are given by the solid yellow line in this animation. We can see that the yellow waves vary in amplitude. At some points they are large and at some points very small. Superimposed are a pair of dashed yellow lines. This gives the envelope for the waves. Curves that give bounds for the magnitude of the local waves. All the yellow waves lie inside these curves and touch it near their peaks and troughs. At some points the amplitude is zero, and at others it is twice the amplitude of the original two waves. Between the points where the waves have small amplitude, we can th think of the waves as forming packets or groups. The energy of waves is related to their amplitude, so in between the packets there is a region of negligible energy. The energy is associated with the large waves, and will move with the packets or groups of waves. The speed of the energy transmission is called the group velocity. Returning to the mathematics, we add the elevation of two waves of the same amplitude, but with slightly different wave numbers, k0 and k1. These will have corresponding frequencies omega naught and omega one. This is given in the top expression for the surface elevation eta. Using a standard trigonometric relation, we re-express this as the product of two cosines, as shown at the bottom. Let us look at this expression in more detail. If we look at the first cosine on the right hand side, shown in blue, we see this has terms k naught plus k one over two multiplying x and omega naught plus omega 1 over 2 multiplying t. These are the average wave number and the average frequency of the original waves. These represent the basic wave number and frequency of the yellow wave. This will have a wavelength that is roughly the average of the two original waves. The second term has the term k naught minus k1 divided by 2 multiplying x and an equivalent term multiplying t. This gives us the wave number for the packets if k0 and k1 are very close together, 
then the difference will be small. The resulting groups of waves will be very long. So the wave number of the envelope is given by k0 minus k1 divided by 2 and the frequency by omega0 minus omega1 divided by 2. The speed that the envelope moves to the right will be given by its frequency divided by its wave number. This is omega0 minus omega1 divided by k0 minus k1. If we consider k0 to be fixed and look at the limit of k1 tending to k0, then this expression will tend to the derivative of omega with respect to k. This will be the speed of the groups of waves, the speed that the energy moves. This is called the group velocity. We will denote this as c with a subscript g. For waves on deep water, the dispersion relation is that omega is equal to the square root of g times k. The phase velocity is omega divided by k, giving the square root of g divided by k. The group velocity is the derivative of omega with respect to k, and is half the square root of g divided by k. Thus, the group velocity is half the phase velocity. The energy moves with half the speed of the wave crest. If you find the group velocity of sound or light waves, you will find that they are again equal to the speed of sound or the speed of light respectively. All sound waves travel at the same speed, independent of their wavelengths or frequencies, as do light waves in vacuums. If we again look at the animation of the groups of waves, we see that the wave crests do indeed move faster than the groups of waves, and if you time how long they take to go from one side to the other, you should find that the groups do indeed take roughly twice as long as an individual wave crest. Here we see a sequence of photos of the ripples created when a stone was thrown into the Thames near Windsor. In the first you see two or three circular ripples that have formed around the small-scale messy ripples caused by the stone splash. As the ripples spread out, we see a couple of things. Firstly, that the ripples further out have a longer wavelength than those nearer the centre. This is what we expect. Longer waves have a higher group velocity than the shorter waves. As the waves spread out, they reduce in amplitude as their energy gets distributed over a bigger area. Also, as the region of ripples gets spread out, we see more and more ripples forming. The range of wavelengths doesn't change, so you need more waves to fill up the expanding region between the first and last ripples. By the time we get to the last photo, the longer ripples are mostly lost amongst the other ripples on the river. These main features can all be seen if we return to the third picture in the sequence. If we had included the effect of surface tension, then very short waves also move faster. This is shown in close-up photographs of ripples caused by small objects such as drops. We will return for a further look at shipwakes in a future presentation.